Manuel Fitzroy Hoyt is a semi-abstract fine arts painter who believes that there is a natural interaction in the transference of energy, creating experiences of metamorphosis, that which he sees as being alive. And he's here to tell us all about this. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. So, well, my first question to you, I see you have this lovely piece, masterpiece here. And uh, during the break, I was asking you if this is, uh, if this is what you define as semi-abstract art. So what exactly is this? Is it semi-abstract art? Yes, it is semi-abstract art. It could also be themed as mixed media. And when I say mixed media, it's because when you use different mediums, you would theme in terms of the, the type of, there's acrylic, there's oils, because of the use of, of the, if you look, I have, I use some of the actual materials from the sea. So yes. you see the corals, you see the actual coral, coral flowers and shells and, and all of this sort of just embellishes the piece along with the paint and the sand and glue to give it a, a, a texture. The title of this piece is, is entitled Buku, which was inspired by Tobago and it's from a series entitled Distant Relatives and this piece was sort of inspired by an exhibition that I had about roughly I would say about four years ago in South Africa yeah so it's 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 a continuing production of work that I'm working on for another show which should be soon enough and you'll get some more information on that so you've been uh, showcasing your work in places like South Africa and that mm -hmm. sort of thing yeah internationally I, I have been focusing more on building a clientele and the name brand outside of Trinidad and Tobago. Okay, now I'd like to talk about the, the as you said, mixed media. Now, personally, I've not seen many of these types of pieces. I would more or less see uh, flat pieces. Um, mm -hmm. How popular is, is this? Well, it is growing in terms of it's, we, we could call it three-dimensional art yes, or three yes. arts, there cultural, you know, so yeah. rather than having a flat piece or a two-dimensional piece, you have a piece that you can look at from different angles. It, it sort of speaks to you, it, it, it evokes more of your thoughts, you know? So it's similar to a carnival as you put on a mask, you can now kind of play mask. So this kind of touches with that aspect in terms of you see the mask and now it's, it's, a, it's a piece of art, you know? So you could kind of look at it and see that it's 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 sort of a life or it brings for that life of from the from the actual painting or artwork that was very intricate i'm sure it would have taken a lot of time to put every piece together like this yeah and i actually work on a series at a time so i may work on roughly like about 30 to 35 45 pieces at the same time so it works where you start off working on one piece, you move from that, and as you get inspired, you keep going. So really? you, yeah. So it doesn't break your concentration or focus? Well, I think you get the inspiration, or I'll mm -hmm. get the inspiration from things that uh, you read, music, okay. life. So it's you like know, writing a book? Exactly. Wow. It is like writing Serious? a book, yes. Okay. So mm -hmm. what's the inspiration behind this piece? Like I said, this one was inspired by, by Tobago, mm -hmm. you know, and the Boko Reef. I, I, I love to go to Tobago. Mm -hmm. and just recently, I know everyone was talking about the ferry and, and it has been a challenge, but when you get to Tobago and you're able to go to the beach and spend time, it, for an artist, it's, it's like heaven. It's inspiring to just be there and be able to take some of the natural art or, or, or precious gems, which are like the corals and these things, stones, you know, where people may just, I spend time on the beach just picking up these stuff and bringing it back and then I'll create something from it. So this is what you get here. Yeah. What are some of the pieces that you use at the bottom? I'm seeing some shells. Mm -hmm. what, what are the other pieces? Well, they are corals. Like I said, it's, it's different type of corals, different type of shells, but because I would paint and mm -hmm. add different mediums as the sand and the glue, it kind of gives it a feel that it's all, it's supposed to make you feel as if you're under that water. Yeah at the bottom of the reef and this is sort of the spirit of the actual reef you know where's the sand the sand you if you look carefully and you see the texture 
it's mm -hmm. that medium that created the texture. So if you look at some of the pieces to the top, it looks like the leaves that are growing, but the leaves mm -hmm. actually have a, a textured surface. Yeah, that's sand and glue yeah. that you mix and you, you apply it onto the surface. Mm -hmm. So, so those are like the veins right. of the branches? Yes, which will look like roots. If you look on the face, you could see that as yeah. well. How difficult is it to work with those type with sand in particular, to get it to stick together and then paint over it? Well, it's, I guess because I'm creatively inclined, <laughs> I wouldn't say it's difficult, you know. Um, it's more difficult speaking to you with a hundred <laughs> or a million people looking, but um, it's a technique that I think it's a gift, you yeah. know, so you just explore and you enjoy. So I think for me, explore, the whole being able to explore different mediums yeah. and using natural resources. So even like the little glass bottle that falls into the ocean and over a period of time, it just gets grind down to a point where it looks like a stone. Yeah. You could incorporate that into the piece of art as well. So it's not difficult. This is not difficult mm -hmm. for me. This is like my by nature yeah yeah second nature mm -hmm. now you don't always do three-dimensional pieces no. you also do regular two-dimensional yeah i i work in different mediums so i work in pen and ink so those are like black and white drawings really yeah i work in acrylics and again economically i work with what i can afford to work with you know so those are the, the limitations that i i would yeah. say i have at this point but there's so much yet to come. Mm -hmm. And even with the studio, which is Think Artwork Studio, I am mentoring new and upcoming artists and that's sort of allowing them the opportunity you now to see different ways and means to explore and create, you know, from yeah. their minds. And I, I see you have some pieces there on screen. What can you tell us about those pieces? Okay, so that picture is actually a program that we have which is entitled Little Picassos. Mm -hmm. And these are kids that are like two and a half years. They yeah. come and they get introduced to painting. <coughs> Sorry. And, uh, and for them, at that age, yeah. their minds are open to everything. It's, it's surprising how they could look at a painting and see so much from it, you know? And, and I think that's where we need to challenge, channel, you know, in terms of getting them to have that appreciation for it. So as they grow older, they would grow with that appreciation. Yeah. Can you, as a lecturer, uh, you, you teach art, can you bring out the artistic side in anyone? Well, I could harness that creativity. I think you can assist, but because of creativity, something that you, you, you're blessed with, mm -hmm. you know, you could learn, you could go to an institute and learn various techniques, but it's something that comes naturally. I think we're all artists, by the way we speak, you know, you, the, the way you may cook some food, you know, there's an art in everything. Yeah. So, so yes, there is, but it's not like if you could make someone be creative, mm -hmm. that comes from within. Yeah. And you'd be a magician. <laughs> okay, now we are talking about you. So you spoke about natural interaction and the transference of energy, creating experiences of metamorphosis. What is this all about? Well, it all begins in the mind, mm -hmm. you know, and and spoken words. So, being a creative person, you you feel as if what you are doing is just as you were saying, writing, but with images and color. And then what that allows now is that thought process and someone's imagination now to be able to relate it. So I see art as it's a luxury, one where most people may not be able to afford it, but they could still look at it and appreciate it, you know, and it's also therapeutic, you know, so you may have a stressful day and you could come home and have a glass of wine or have a glass of tea and look at the painting and it could allow you to, you know, so all these are different mm -hmm. aspects of, of art and, and I think the importance of art in society. Now that sounds wonderful and I really envy those who can appreciate certain types of art because sometimes I look at a piece of art and everybody is all wow about it and I'm like, it just looks like an accident on paper or, or canvas. How do I learn to appreciate art? How do I begin to recognize the value or, or, you know, good art? Well, like, that's life, huh? Accidents are something that we're supposed to learn from. I think also, you know, when you 
when as an artist there's no accident it's just character and it's all perception you know so if you're coming from a positive outlook an accident is something that you could take and use to grow you know mm -hmm. so i would say um come by think artwork studio yeah. and uh, we have different options you know there's 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 an event that that i usually host as well which is called sip and paint which yes, I allows love that right i would sip but mm. and and create so after you sip a while it it frees you up <laughs> you know <laughs> it opens up your mind. it opens up your creativity and and it allows you now to not feel as timid because fear is something that kind of holds us back you know you studying with someone would think i, I never drew a line before i kind of a lot of people say that but then when they sit and they realize that it's really not that difficult it's really you holding yourself back so majority of the times we are the ones who you know kind of hold yeah. ourselves back by the way we think. Mm -hmm. Now earlier you mentioned that you use materials that you can afford. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about young artists or so young aspiring artists looking on wondering if this would lead to gainful employment. Well I would say anyone who is getting into art must love it and must have that faith you know because art really deals with faith. <laughs> I think you um you if you're going into a career as an artist and you want to make money then it's probably better if you go down the lines of graphics and the various things which are more commercial right. and and you can still be a fine artist so you have to balance both i think everything else everything in life there there you have to be determined and confident in what you do and because um, I, my art is spiritual, I really mm -hmm. believe that God is behind everything and, and you must basically pay reference to that. So believe in yourself, you know, but find ways and means to learn, you know, and, 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 and don't, don't allow people or even parents, because I think mm -hmm. any young person who's going into art, their parents yeah, no, you push them in the next, or lawyer or them in the next direction. So, yeah. Even with the studio, it allows parents and young people to see that artists too, there's a career mm -hmm. behind that, you know, but it's not easy. And it may not be one where when you hear a lot of people say, well, it's when you die, your paintings become, you know, but there are successful artists out there. And I think there's space for that. I also think that as a country and, and in terms of the, we need to look at various, our, I guess, what we have as our treasures and we have a lot of creativity in Trinidad and Tobago it's just in people's homes and 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 behind someone's bed because there's no way to really have it exposed mm -hmm. you know so exposure is really important so they should show their work they should practice you know and 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 allow that to 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 blossom yeah, so you have exhibitions or you, you have a platform where young artists can come and display their stuff? Yes, I think Artwork Studio, we, that's, what, that's what this space is there for. It's really not just about my studio yeah. and me, me having mm. exhibitions. As my, my most recent exhibition, which was Represent, which had 35 artists, 80 paintings overall, established and new and upcoming artists. So oh. it's, it's a space for young Great and well-known people. When is the next workshop or, or exhibition? There is a lot of things online. Mm -hmm. You could visit the website to see what we have. And Is there a number to call very quickly? Yes, 769-1948. And uh, thinkartworktt at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. www.thinkartworktt at gmail.com. Think Artwork Studio and we're located at number 63 Carlos Street in Woodbrook. Great, I have one piece, an uh, eggshell piece that, that I'll talk to you about. 